Hello, we are Joyce and Andre, and we are presenting our work on asynchronous multi-view SLAM. SLAM, which stands for Simultaneous Localization Mapping, aims to tackle robot state estimation by building a map at the same time. SLAM enables navigation in unknown areas without prior maps. It can also be used to build high-definition maps and has applications in augmented and virtual reality as well. In this work, we focus on visual SLAM systems that only take camera images as input. Since cameras are inexpensive, contain rich information of the surrounding environment, and are widely used. Existing visual SLAM systems most commonly use a monocular camera or a pair of stereo cameras. One problem is that this camera setup inherently has a limited field of view, which might suffer from occlusions, illumination changes, and lead to tracking failures. One natural way to address this limitation is by using multiple cameras. With a much larger field of view, multiple cameras can make more observations of the surrounding environment and perform more robustly in complex real-world scenes. However, existing multi-view SLAM systems all assume that the multiple cameras fire at the same time. In practice, the multiple cameras can be asynchronous due to technical limitations or by design. For example, the cameras can be synchronized to another sensor, such as a spinning LiDAR which is a common setup in recent self-driving datasets. As you can see in this example on the right, the multiple cameras on the self-driving vehicle fire according to the rotating LiDAR, and the firing interval between cameras can be as large as 33 milliseconds. Ignoring this time difference can lead to quite significant localization errors if the vehicle travels very fast on a highway. Therefore, in this work, we tackle the asynchronous multi-view SLAM problem by extending existing visual SLAM systems to work with multiple cameras with asynchronous shutters. Our main contributions are twofold. First, we formulate a general multi-view SLAM framework that is agnostic to camera firing times. Second, due to the lack of public benchmarks to evaluate asynchronous multi-view SLAM, we collect a large-scale outdoor SLAM dataset with multiple cameras, diverse environments, and accurate ground truth for evaluation. To build an asynchronous multi-view SLAM system, the first task is to organize input from multiple cameras. Existing synchronous multi-view SLAM systems group images captured at the same time into something we call synchronous multi-frames, as you can see from the top of this figure. However, this is not directly applicable when the camera times are different. To generalize to asynchronous cameras, we introduce asynchronous multi-frames which group images that are captured closely in time, as shown in the bottom of this figure. We can then perform tracking and mapping on these asynchronous multi-frames directly. In addition, in order to represent robot trajectory at arbitrary camera firing times, we utilize a continuous time motion model. The continuous time motion model can take many forms, but in our framework, we employ a cumulative cubic view supply model parameterized by a set of control points in the SE3 post space. In our formulation, we associate each key multi-frame with a control point, and the shape of trajectory in each time interval is defined by the four neighboring control points. As a result, trajectory estimation is equivalent to optimizing the set of control points. So the question is, how do we find the optimal values for these post parameters? To optimize post parameters, let's first take a look at how existing synchronous multi-view SLAM systems perform trajectory estimation. In the synchronous multi-view systems, the robot trajectory is usually expressed as a set of discrete poses at the camera capture times. In a feature-based indirect SLAM formulation, the goal is to find the set of discrete poses and the set of map points that can best minimize the reprojection error. In asynchronous multi-view SLAM, we express the trajectory as a continuous time motion model with post parameters. As a result, in our formulation, we replace the discrete post terms with the continuous post representations and jointly optimize for the post parameters instead. We integrate our concept of asynchronous multi-frames 
and the continuous time motion model into a traditional feature-based indirect SLAM system. The AMV SLAM system works as follows. After initialization, where we initialize the control point of the first multi-frame and the observed map points, we take each incoming asynchronous multi-frame as input and perform tracking to estimate the motion model parameters, or equivalently the robot trajectory for the new multi-frame. We then perform a check to determine whether we'd like to promote the new multi-frame to a key multi-frame. For computational efficiency, we select a subset of all multi-frames as key multi-frames and only perform local mapping and loop closing on this subset. If the current multi-frame is selected as a key multi-frame, we conduct local mapping with window bundle adjustment, where we jointly optimize the post parameters and map points over a recent set of key multi-frames to ensure local consistency. After this, we check whether the robot is revisiting a previously mapped area. If a loop is encountered, we then perform the asynchronous multi-view loop closure to correct global drift of the robot. After loop closure, or if the answer is no to any of the questions before, we take the next upcoming asynchronous multi-frame as input and repeat this process. Next, Andre will go over the evaluation dataset and experimental results. Thank you, Joyce. There does not exist a public SLAM benchmark with multiple asynchronous cameras on which to evaluate our method. To address this, we collected a new SLAM benchmark for this evaluation. We use a robot platform with seven asynchronous cameras and collect 21 hours of driving covering 482 kilometers in the Pittsburgh area. Our dataset includes challenging real-world conditions such as occlusion, lighting changes, textureless highway driving, shadows and vegetation, as well as low light scenes. Compared to existing public benchmarks, our dataset is large scale, covers diverse weather conditions and geographic regions, and is recorded with multiple asynchronous cameras. We evaluate our system on this novel SLAM benchmark. We use classic SLAM metrics, such as absolute trajectory error and the relative pose error, as well as measuring the success rate. To aggregate the metrics over dozens of sequences, we also report the median as well as the area under a cumulative curve for these metrics. Next, we will showcase some results. We first compare our AMV SLAM system using all cameras with existing methods such as DSO, Orb SLAM, and Stereo Orb SLAM. We also compare with a baseline method that uses all cameras but incorrectly assumes that they all fire at the same time. This effectively corresponds to a direct multi-view generalization of Orb SLAM 2. Our results show that using all cameras and correctly modeling them as asynchronous outperforms all other methods by a significant margin. Note that bold numbers indicate the best result in a column, while the second best is underlined. It's worth highlighting that using all cameras, but incorrectly assuming that they are synchronous, sync all, actually performs worse than just using a synchronous stereo pair, sync stereo, which highlights the importance of asynchronous modeling. We then perform a series of ablation studies. We swap the cubic B-spline model with a synchronous discrete time model and an asynchronous linear model. Our results have shown that the cubic B-spline model in our method achieves best performance overall. We next experiment with different camera configurations. Our results show that, as expected, having more cameras increases the SLAM performance across the board. However, it's worth pointing out that, as we saw a few slides ago, this only holds when the asynchronous nature of the problem is modeled. If the system does not account for this, more cameras does not automatically equal better. Last but not least, we experiment with different front-end feature extractors. In our framework, we have used ORB, but using RootSift and recent learning-based feature extractors such as SuperPoint can improve the success rate and absolute trajectory errors, especially in challenging low-texture scenes with the caveat that the feature extraction is now much slower. Next, we show some qualitative results. The ground truth is shown in blue, while orb slam is shown in light brown. Our AMV slam system is shown in red, and all trajectories start at the black diamond. We first show some qualitative trajectories where orb slam with stereo cameras has large tracking errors, 
or has ended early, while our method with all cameras is able to localize almost perfectly. Note that in this particular case, the red AMV slam trajectory can be a little difficult to spot because it overlaps quite well with the ground truth. We next show a challenging highway driving scenario where both Orb Slam 2 as well as our system have large tracking errors. Finally, this is another challenging highway sequence where our method has ended early while Orb Slam 2 finishes, albeit with larger errors. We now show a video of AMV Slam running in the real world. On the top left, we only show the view from the front middle camera, while in practice our system as described earlier takes input images from all seven cameras. We show the estimated continuous time vehicle trajectory in green and the generated map points in black. Our system successfully navigates busy streets and manages to close the loop correctly as we will soon see. As soon as the system revisits the area that it's seen before, it triggers loop closure, the pose graph gets updated, and the global consistency is achieved, like so. All right. To summarize, in this work, we studied the multi-camera slam problem, where the cameras can be asynchronous among themselves. Our proposed framework incorporates asynchronous multi-frames and a continuous time motion model to perform tracking, local mapping, and loop closing. To evaluate our method, we propose and will make public a large-scale slam benchmark with diverse motions and environments. Our experiments have shown that correctly modeling the sensors as asynchronous and using multiple cameras are crucial building blocks towards accurate and robust SLAM in the real world. We plan to release our dataset as well as the code to the community. Thank you all for coming to our presentation and for checking out the video, and please check out the project website for more details. Thank you.